I am the Reverend Philip Cooper. Welcome to our Monday morning prayers and I'm glad that you could join us. I'm going to begin with some prayers from the Fourth Order of Worship from our Moravian Church Liturgy book. Many of these prayers are quite old traditional prayers that you will find in many other Christian church liturgies and they go back many, many years. So let us begin with a few moments of quiet contemplation and then we shall begin our prayers. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto God through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves. that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being requires. Wherefore, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. And now let us just have a few moments of quiet contemplation when we can bring our own prayers of confession and repentance before God. O Lord, have mercy upon us and blot out our transgressions. Grant, we beseech thee, almighty God, that we who are burdened with the consciousness of our guilt may by thy merciful pardon be absolved and that being cleansed from all sin we may be clothed in thy righteousness and worthily rejoice in the joy of thy saints through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer that Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for 
all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life. But above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit we all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. I want to read for you now a reading from the Bible, from the Scriptures, and it's taken from Exodus chapter 12, beginning at verse 37, and reading through to verse 42. And this describes the Israelite nation setting off from Egypt, where they had been slaves, to begin their journey to the land that God promised to give them, the land of Canaan. So it's from Exodus chapter 12, beginning at verse 37. The Israelites set out on, fro on foot from Ramesses for Succoth. There were about 600,000 men, not counting women and children. A large number of other people and many sheep, goats and cattle also went with them. They baked unleavened bread from the dough that they had brought out of Egypt. For they had been driven out of Egypt so suddenly that they did not have time to get their food ready or to prepare leavened dough. The Israelites had lived in Egypt for 430 years. On the day the 430 years ended, all the tribes of the Lord's people left Egypt. It was a night when the Lord kept watch to bring them out of Egypt. This same night is dedicated to the Lord for all time to come as a night when the Israelites must keep watch. May God add his blessing to that reading and may he help us through his Holy Spirit to understand. Those of you who are parents will probably remember going on a family holiday in the car or some other form of transportation. On those longer holiday journeys, you probably remember your children for the umpteenth time asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? The government has now set out its roadmap for coming out of the pre present COVID-19 coronavirus restrictions and back to normality or the new normal. The government has signposted certain dates along the way, outlining the restrictions that will hopefully be lifted on those dates. I say hopefully because each of these dates has the tentative words before it no earlier than. No earlier than such a date you will be able to do this. No earlier than such a date you will be able to do that. We're not there yet, but thankfully we are on our way. You know, I think some comparisons can be drawn between our journey out of this present COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic and the restrictions that we are under 
and the journey of the Israelites as they journeyed to the promised land of Canaan. The Israelites travelled through the wilderness. It was a long journey. They faced testing times. Along the way, they grumbled from time to time. Canaan was a new and unfamiliar land. In the same way, this past year has been a long journey. It's been something of a wilderness experience. It's been a testing time for all of us. And I'm sure we've all done some grumbling along the way. And also, when the restrictions are lifted, life will not be the same, will it? Life will have changed in all sorts of ways for all of us. We're not there yet, but we are on our way. And like the Israelites, God is with us every single step of the way. Amen. We're going to share in some prayers of intercession now and these prayers are taken from the Moravian Church's daily textbook and I'm using the prayers for Wednesdays which is on the subject of those who suffer and I'm sure we can all think of people who have suffered over this past year and those who are continuing to suffer during this present coronavirus pandemic. So let us pray. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God our Father, we thank you for the life-giving and healing ministry of Jesus Christ and for the sense of renewal and hope which it gives. Inspire your church to use the gifts you have given to continue this ministry with confidence, remembering that, we, that you are a God of health and wholeness. We pray for all in need of your healing touch today. For those who mourn and for those living with any form of disability. For those dealing with depression and mental illness. For those finding it difficult to let go of painful memories. For those struggling with addiction to alcohol, drugs, gambling and any form of addiction, for the fearful and the despairing, for the lonely and isolated, for those who feel they have nowhere to turn. We give thanks for those working in hospitals, hospices, nursing homes and homes for the elderly. For those caring for the elderly, and those who cannot leave their home due to illness. For counsellors and for the work of self-help groups and charities like the Samaritans. And for all those engaged in medical missionary work and medical research. Compassionate God, pour out on your people a loving and generous heart. Support those who suffer and make them aware of your comforting and sustaining love in their time of need. Bless and empower those whose vocation is healing and, com and, and who, who comfort the sick. Enable us to live up to our high calling of showing your love to all in need. And these prayers we offer 
In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us finish our time together by sharing in the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.